This is Colorado's own Channel 2 News Daybreak. We're following a major story from Loveland Pass. A snow slide has closed US 6 on the east side of that pass. Colorado State Patrol says it will remain closed until daylight. That's when crews can finally get in to make sure everything is safe. Pinpoint Weather Beast is up at the Eisenhower Tunnel. As you can see right now, where traffic will be held at the top of every hour to allow those trucks carrying hazmat material through the tunnel. Well, we got plenty to talk about, especially in the high country mm -hmm. this morning. Meteorologist Chris Tomer telling us about that. Down here, it yeah. looks very different, though. <laughs> it is, and it's going to be that way uh, for a while. It's still snow showering a little bit up here. Ernie and Natalie, this is... Uh, yeah, I know, I was just thinking <laughs> the same thing. One of our competitors there doing a live shot. Uh, so what's the big deal? Well, Loveland Pass is closed from a snow slide. They didn't get a lot of snow out of this at Loveland Ski Area. Um, the winds, though, were consistently strong yesterday afternoon. And what they do, we've had a lot of early season snow, so they're moving the snow around. It tends to drift the snow and pile it, and then eventually you can get those slabs to form it. You can get uh, avalanches uh, uh, from that. And there's a number of avalanche chutes just off to the right-hand side, if you were driving up through here, that uh, may have been uh, where that occurred. So here's the setup. Our storm system is exiting Colorado. You can see it moving out from the south. Still, though, a little shrouding effect up at the uh, over the continental divide this morning with leftover snow showers. The wind has come down. It's not as strong up there as it was yesterday. And even the wind here in Denver is also beginning to relax. My pinpoint weather forecast hour by hour. Not that warm today. 39, 40, 41 degrees, somewhere right in there. The wind will go away. It will go sunny through the afternoon. Totally different pattern setting up for the weekend. We will look closer at that here and the Broncos game in just a few. But Ken, over to you for look at the time saver traffic. Yes, yeah, Sky 2 joins us this morning. Uh, surprised to see these guys given what the wind conditions were, but it must be calm up top. They're right over I-25 in Santa Fe. So here's I-25, here's Santa Fe. There's the Home Depot. Uh, you're finding pretty decent conditions through the city this morning. Now, west of town, like Chris was talking about, boy, the snow really has impacted that drive across I-70. Loveland is closed. Traction and chain laws exist for passengers and semis beginning basically at Silverthorne and stretching all the way through a Vail Pass. And be sure to give those semis or semis, the plow trucks, the space they need to uh, get the job done. Through the city, the delays along 25 and 270 are here. Our first crash off onto the side street right near I-70 at 48th and Pecos. Drive times though, not bad guys. Speeds along these freeways are holding. 270 seeing some delays, but I believe wide open. It's about six to seven minutes, so the slowdowns really aren't that excessive just yet. All right, Ken, thank you very much. Well, it's almost like a rock concert happening today. Former First Lady Michelle Obama bringing her book tour right here to Denver. <laughs> it's similar to a it rock is. concert. That means crowds and tight security at several locations around town throughout the day. In fact, Jim Hooley is live. He's at the Tattered Cover Bookstore on Colfax, where she's going to make an appearance, and it's a very popular ticket to have just to get mm -hmm. to a bookstore. <laughs> Jim. Uh -oh. Definitely, Natalie, definitely. Yeah, and, and I guess you could say the concert starts here, you know, starting around noontime or so. And they already have some of the restrictions in place here, security in place here in front of the tattered cover on Colfax. Right by East High School, you can see no parking up and down the street right in front of the tattered cover. She's here coming up at noontime, uh, or in the noon hour, I should say, and then at the Pepsi Center a little bit later on in the evening. So here's a look at the schedule now. Obama's book called Becoming, quickly becoming one of the fastest selling nonfiction books ever. Her publishing company reporting sales already of 3 million copies. That makes it the best-selling book so far of 2018. The book signing event here at the Tattered Cover begins at 2.30 this afternoon. You can line up at noontime, as we mentioned. It requires a special wristband, too, to get in. The wristbands went on sale yesterday morning at 9.30. They have already sold out, so forget about that. You can still, though, find a limited number of tickets available for the event tonight. That's going to be at the Pepsi Center downtown. The event begins at 8 o'clock. The doors open at 6.30, we understand. Reese Witherspoon, the actress, she is going to be the moderator for the event tonight at the Pepsi Center. And as we said, if you were lucky enough, if you were lucky enough, I don't know the total number of people that were able to get tickets or wristbands for uh, the book signing here, you can line up at noontime here in front of the tattered cover. A word to the wise. They're saying no personalization, no getting up close uh, and personal with the former first lady at the event here at the Tattered Cover, and no photographs as well. That for the event here, again, when you can line up at noontime today, starting at noon here at the Tattered Cover. Live over on the east side of East Colfax at the Tattered Cover, I'm Jim Hooley. Channel 2 News. Yeah, Jim, I was just reading about this. She sold already 3 million books, and 10% of all the proceeds from the books in the uh, appearances like tonight are going to unspecified charities. So hmm. 
He's making a lot of money off yeah. it. <laughs> I would think it's going to be yeah. hard to keep people from taking pictures with everyone in a smartphone. I know. So we shall see. All right, Jim, thanks. thanks Jim. Yeah. Meantime, a historic flight for First Lady Melania Trump. Take a look at this video posted on the First Lady's Twitter page. It shows Melania and others flying over parts of Virginia and the Atlantic Ocean in a V-22 Osprey. It's the first time ever that a First Lady has ever flown on an Osprey, which can fly like a plane and land and take off like a helicopter. Mrs. Trump was part of a series of military-themed events. All right, breaking news is coming into our newsroom. Tragic story. A crash down in Los Adamas County near Trinidad killed three people, including a sheriff's deputy. Three deputies were responding to a call when they were involved in a crash with a civilian car on Highway 12 east of Valdez, Colorado. The driver of that car and a child were killed. The deputies were taken to the hospital. One of those deputies has died from his injuries. The other two are being treated right now. Highway 12 closed for seven hours, reopened just a few minutes ago. Right now, firefighters are investigating a fire at a mobile home park in El Paso County. At least one mobile home was on fire in the Springs Roberts communities. Several fire crews responded. There were reports of explosions. We are still working to confirm all of that information. Well, later today, a vigil will be held for a missing mother down in Woodland Park. Kelsey Barrett disappeared on Thanksgiving Day. We've been telling you about this story. The 29-year-old was last seen at a grocery store with her one-year-old daughter on Thanksgiving Day morning. She has now been missing for three weeks. Two women planned a vigil for tonight, even though they don't even know Kelsey Barrett. We just feel like it's really important that uh, they know that she is loved, and I think it's just really important to keep that awareness going. Now, while the investigation continues, police are still calling this a missing persons case, and, and there are no suspects right now. The vigil will be held at Memorial Park down in Woodland Park at 6 tonight. That's about 30 minutes west of Colorado Springs. Police say Kelsey Barrett's fiance, Patrick Frazee, is cooperating with that investigation. He now has an attorney who released a statement on his behalf. The attorney echoes what police have said, that he is assisting officers with things like swabs, photographs, and interviews. Frazee was not at that news briefing about the search on Monday. His attorney says the briefing was had given him very short notice to get there. Court documents now giving us new details about a case against a Thornton man who's accused of killing his girlfriend, then putting her body in the trunk of his car, driving up to Wyoming. Police say Jonathan Aiken stabbed his girlfriend, Autumn Rivera, to death. In new court documents, Aiken admits to killing her. He apparently confessed several times, including to his mother. Aiken told her he, quote, blacked out and woke up 10 hours later when he saw a body and lots of blood. Autumn's sister, Amber, told police she spoke with Autumn days before she was killed. She said they had a long conversation where Autumn talked about arguing over relationship issues. Aiken also confessed to Amber, the sister. He has been formally charged now with first-degree murder. Bell ringers keeping a very close eye on kettles this year. The Salvation Army has had two different kettles stolen so far this season. The first one happened in Fort Collins. Police did arrest a man believed to be behind it. Then this week, a kettle was stolen from a donation location in Greeley. The Salvation Army says the suspect put a coin in and then came back and acted as if they were making another donation, but they grabbed and ran off with the kettle. This absolutely was planned. Uh, they had a driver in a car that was running, and you ran to the car, jumped in the car, and, 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 uh, and they sped off. While it's disappointing, this doesn't stop us. Uh, we're going to continue to fight for good. Major Dickinson says you also want to watch out for fakes. He says when you see a bell ringer, be sure that they really have an identification card for the Salvation Army and an apron as well. New this morning, a large exhibit celebrating the life and the works of Leonardo da Vinci coming to Denver. It will be at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science starting March 1st. Models created using da Vinci's concepts as a blueprint will be on display. And one part of the exhibit will be devoted to the Mona Lisa. Mm. Should be very interesting. All right, look at this. Ooh. Steamboat Spring seen a lot of snow. The ski resort says it snowed nine out of the last 12 days. And there's been more than two feet of snow at Mid Mountain so far this month. What a beautiful sight up there. They're loving it. Yeah, now the drive to get there is going to be a little dicey. We'll break down what you're dealing with west of town here in the city. It's a great start. We'll break down conditions across 25 and update you on the side street accidents coming in. Chris. Oh, Ken, and speaking of Steamboat, Colorado, look at the last 24 hours. Steamboat at the top of the list at almost a foot of snow.
Gaylord of the Rockies getting ready to open the impact it's going to have on Aurora as well as Denver. And a tax on texting? Well, one state has a plan in the works. You're watching Daybreak on Colorado Zone Channel 2. Good morning, Americans spend 10 hours a day with media, but that's mostly because we're often juggling more than one device at a time. According to the Nielsen survey, Americans watched almost five hours of television, listened to nearly two hours of radio, and spent more than three and a half hours on a digital device per day, and that measurement was taken in the spring of this year. Well, Netflix is testing an instant replay feature. The pop-up feature appears on the screen following certain scenes, and it is available only on a selection of the services shows. Netflix's new feature offers a sophisticated version of replay. It uh, will replay whole scenes or sequences with a click or tap. It's unclear when or if it will be rolled out to all customers. And half of Americans think sharing services is risky. Insurance company Lloyd says despite the popularity of Uber, Airbnb, and others, many Americans believe they're putting their personal safety at risk by using sharing services because it means that you have to interact with strangers. And 58% think that the risks outweigh the benefits. Americans still like the cost and flexibility of the shared services though. Live at the NASDAQ market site, I'm Jane King. Back to you, Ernie and Natalie. Very interesting. All right, Jane, thanks very much. <laughs> okay. All right, see you later. Check this out, everybody. Pinpoint Weather Beast was oh, in the high country last night and saw these Christmas lights. This is in Frisco, and it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas up there for sure. Wow, just what, a, another week in a couple of days before Christmas. Frisco is a beautiful town oh, up there, right on Lake Is that Dillard. all? What did you just say? Love a week and a couple of Yes, a week and a half. To do. <laughs> a week and a half. You start getting numbers to it, and then I get yeah, it's nervous. Almost you gotta, here. You got to untangle your lights. I know. You got to do everything. Do you guys get presence. those weather books for me I asked for? Yeah. And weather we're books. Yeah. Weather yeah. books. I better write that down. Stocking stuffers. Yeah. <laughs> what else do you like? Tell us about the weather today. I'm all set. Tell us about the weather today. Cup of coffee and call it a day. I'm real simple like that. Uh, All right, so here we go. Let's look at the snow and wind here in the mountains. Uh, so it was pretty strong up there. Uh, nothing jumps out to me, though, as being, oh, my gosh, that was incredible. Uh, these are kind of standard fair gusts up there in the mountains this time of the year. But we've had a lot of early season snow, and the wind tends to drift that snow around and create avalanche hazards. And I think that's what we're seeing up there on Loveland Pass. Eventually, the weight just can be too much. And some of these shoots with the, uh, the inclination, and so it just drops down. Uh, Steamboat, though, at the top of the list, over the last 24 hours, almost a foot there. Tell your I got eight, Breck five, Vail three, Keystone two. Very surprised at Loveland. I thought for sure you'd be up at three, four, five inches out of this thing. All right, so here's our live camera that we have, and now it looks like it has slipped. It's looking at the closure up there on Loveland Pass. Uh, the crews from CDOT are going to be clearing away that snow slide once daylight hits. At the bus stop down here, though, across the Front Range, dry, just chilly, 20s this morning, 40 this afternoon, nice warm jacket for the kids, and they'll be okay. So a little bit of leftover snow, kind of shrouding I-70 in the tunnel, the Continental Divide. That vanishes and dries up as today wears on. The wind also relaxes with sunshine here this afternoon and across the Front Range. Friday morning is dry and clear mountains and Front Range, and it ends up being a sunny day tomorrow and a pretty calm one as well. 10.78 forecast, and then it's, it's an entirely different weather pattern. Tomorrow in the 50s, almost 60 on Saturday, partly to mostly cloudy skies. If you're going to the Broncos game Saturday night, dress for these kinds of temperatures starting at 50, 40s at half, 30s by the end of the game. It does look like a dry game, but it's going to be kind of cloudy at times, I do, I do think. Sunday is sunnier and 53, even early next week, Ken. These temperatures are all running on the warm side. We're just dealing with beautiful temps. That means you can get all your shopping done and not have to deal with the weather, which is nice. Sky 2 out over uh, issues Mississippi and Buckley. You can see the flashing lights. Uh, there is some slight traffic delays through here as they deal with this crash. Hasn't been a bad rush here in the city, though, for this Thursday start. It almost mirrors the Wednesday beginning, where the freeways just kind of load up in their usual locations, and we're hit with some side street problems. So Mississippi and Buckley, problems along Sheridan, and an earlier crash along 48th and Pecos. But the freeways themselves are clear of accidents here in town. The uh, delays, not too bad through Aurora. Both directions of 225 are still uh, wide open, and if you're coming in from the Tech Center, into downtown Denver that route less than 15 minutes up in the high country completely different story we will break down conditions across 70 and the closure of Loveland Pass here coming up. All right well the cyber attack on Marriott data was part of a Chinese intelligence gathering hack that's according to the New York Times today the Times reports the hackers are suspected of working on behalf of China's spy agency now 
There are reports that the Trump administration is planning actions against China, including indictments and orders making it harder for Chinese companies to get critical components for telecommunication equipment. The largest hotel in Colorado is set to open next week, just south of DIA, the Gaylord Rockies, promises to produce a bit of an economic boon for Aurora and Denver. The massive complex sits on 85 acres. It's currently surrounded by a whole lot of, well, nothing. But economic development leaders say, just wait. The resort is expected to bring in more than 2,500 jobs and some 450,000 new visitors each year. I think the potential is unprecedented for a Colorado business. The Gaylord Hotel is really the, the catalyst that helps kick that off and, and kind of put that area on the map. Just south of, south of the resort, a pre-planned community is also in the works, similar to Denver's Stapleton neighborhood. Surrounding the hotel will be a 130-acre Gaylord Rockies village of businesses and entertainment venues. We're going to see a lot of change there. We are. Well, how about this? Regulators in California could vote as early as next month on a controversial plan to impose tech taxes on text messaging. The tax would likely come in the form of a monthly surcharge on residents' cell phone bills. Supporters say it's needed to generate more revenue to give access to phone services for low-income families in the state. Well, it's the holiday season, of course, and unfortunately, thieves are out targeting your packages. So can you identify this porch pirate, where it happened, and what to do if you know that person? And another state trying a new tactic to trap those thieves. All right, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Look at the uh, pinpoint weather forecast today, a high of 41 degrees, and we'll see sunshine here across the front range. The storm system exiting, the wind will relax, the mountain snow will eventually end today, and then we'll get into a much different weather pattern for the weekend. And even next week, we'll look at that coming up in the six, just after 630. But right now, Ken, over to you for a look at the time. Been pretty easy drive this morning, Chris. So we're tracking some side street problems. The freeways in town look pretty good. Here's I-70 out near the airport, and this is I-70 uh, up and around the Eisenhower our tunnel. So like Chris was talking about, conditions outside the city are still slick and slow. We'll break those uh, details down for you guys coming up. Ernie. All right. You know, it's like a feeding frenzy this time of year. Caught on camera, a porch fire it's stealing from a home out in Jefferson County. The sheriff's office shared this surveillance video on social media. Take a look at this guy. Authorities say he stole the package just before 2 o'clock in the afternoon on November 30th from a home on West 56th Place. He then rode off on a bicycle. Contact the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office if you recognize that guy. And check this out, another porch pirate showing off his dance moves outside a home in Washington, D.C. You can see the man doing knee bends and dancing before leaning over to take several packages at the front door. Oh, this is weird. He then loads the packages into a car, drives off. The homeowner says one of those packages contained a self-help book, which he thinks he could hopefully put to good use. I think I'm just going to put a bunch <laughs> of coal in a box on I'm my front you, porch. I'm telling you, want to get rid of your bad stuff, your junk, man. just put it out there in a box. Okay, let's try that. Let's do we? that. Well, with package theft concerns on the rise this holiday season, one police agency, well, they're doing something very interesting. They're partnering with Amazon for a high-tech solution to catching thieves, better than our coal method. Amazon giving Jersey City Police a bunch of their boxes with GPS trackers inside. Officers drop them off on neighborhoods, in neighborhoods where they have seen a high rate of thefts. As soon as it's moved, well, guess what happens? Alarms sound back at the station. If they carry the box off, that's even better because they're going to go somewhere where we may want to go with them. Okay. So We might try to sell it, and you'll be there and you get two. We'll be right there to get two arrests. Go. High-tech approach. Well, it's off to a pretty good start. The first arrest in the sting happened about 10 uh, minutes uh, after the tracking system was activated. That's a great idea. Yep. Great idea. More of that, please. Yeah. A mom goes against officers' orders to find the man who attacked her son. And a former CU coach supposed to take a plea deal. Why it didn't go through. Health officials made a big push to get homeless people off the streets and into shelters. Well, what does it look like down here after that sweep? We'll explain. This is Colorado's own Channel 2 News Daybreak. All right, we're updating you on that uh, story out of Loveland Pass. A snow slide closed US 6 overnight on the east side of the pass. Colorado State Patrol says it will remain closed until the sun finally comes up when crews can actually get in there to make sure everything is safe for motorists. The pinpoint weather beast is up at the Eisenhower Tunnel. As you can see right now, the gate is down, forbidding anybody to go over Loveland Pass, including those trucks that carry hazmat material. So they have to go through the Eisenhower Tunnel, which will delay traffic if you're heading up there 
every uh, on the top of the hour about every 10 minutes. Or well, the lights are flashing, plenty of snow up there. Yep. Let's get a closer look at our forecast and the difference from up there to down here yeah. in the Denver area, Chris. Well, we had a lot of wind yesterday, a consistent wind, yep. and we've had a lot of early season snow. And so, yeah, that's, sometimes that's what you see, Ernie and Natalie. There's a number of and this is Loveland Pass. You're looking up. The hill goes up here. And off to the right-hand side as you're driving up, there are a number of avalanche chutes. And so sometimes you get that loading effect um, over the top, and you, and you can have an avalanche from that. So they're just going to make sure everything is okay up there. It is a powder day. There is new snow that fell over the last 24 hours. That storm that did it, exiting Colorado right now. Here's my pinpoint forecast to weather day planner will go with sunshine all the way through less wind here. The wind will relax today as the storm moves out and my high today 41. The normal high is 42, so that's actually right where we should be. But believe it or not, this may actually be the coldest day of the next seven to 10 days. It's a different pattern settling in for the weekend. I'll look at that here in just a few minutes, but also wanted to show you this. There was a snow falling in your ray. And Kevin Torres is making his way down through there before he went over the white knuckle drive over Red Mountain. But there it is, uh, the beautiful view from the Dallas Divide. And you're looking at uh, you're looking at the north side, um, uh, Sneffels right there, Dallas Peak, and um, there's a bunch of great peaks in there. But that is such a beautiful area in the fall. You might recognize that. A lot of photographers go down there, catch that shot with all the fall color. Uh, but that's a beautiful one, Ken. If you ever been down there, tell your ride, fun, oh, Uray, yeah. Ridgeway, all well, that and stuff. You come over the top of that mountain, and uh, your ray kind of sits at the it, base, it and it's, does. it's like a little Swiss mountain village up it, through it's there. It's little Switzerland, so it's uh, very cool. But yeah, Red Mountain Pass is no joke in the winter time. That that would uh, get you white knuckles for sure. Uh, speeds though here in the city and the drive, not much happening. So if you're running a bit behind schedule, the rush hour is treating you uh, quite well. 270 I-25. A couple of delays through here, really nothing uh, out of the ordinary. Speeds are in the mid 30s and 40s. We've had side street problems, uh, Chambers or rather Buckley uh, dealing with a crash uh, near Mississippi and an accident working along Sheridan. Other than that, it's just congestion slowdowns through the city and they're not too bad. If you're up in North Glen and Thornton, you can make it all the way down into the Texan in about 30 minutes, which isn't too shabby. Right now, there are a lot of homeless people on the streets of Denver. This after law enforcement swept up homeless encampments downtown more than a month ago. Health officials had hoped to drive people into shelters and clean things up. Emily Allen following up on the story. And are things any better, Emily? Big question. Ernie and Natalie, in terms of people actually sleeping in tents on the streets in this area, it does look better. I'm standing here at 24th and Broadway, and behind me, you can see the sidewalks are clear besides just people walking out and about this morning. Before in October, what you saw here was tents everywhere. And so that was part of this big sweep was cleaning up this area. Not to say that people aren't still sleeping outside by the Denver Rescue Mission about a block and a half from here. You still see people sleeping on the ground, but those guys are in sleeping bags. So this sweep happened on October 29th. Denver's Department of Public Health and Environment said that this area was a health hazard with all of these campers, and so they wanted to clean it up and get people to move inside. Since that sweep, there are more people staying in shelters, but Chris Connor, the director of Denver's Road Home, which is an organization that helps connect people with these resources, says it's not because of these this sweep. It's more likely because of the cold. The latest point in time survey release shows that of Denver's homeless population, 17% are sleeping on the streets. Compared nationally, the trend is about 35% of people identified in homelessness in the nation report sleeping outside. Uh, so for Denver's sake, uh, we do invest heavily in services for people to, to be able to provide them a place to come into, and that does reflect in our point in time efforts. Connor says there are several factors that play into people not wanting to go into shelters. One of those is that here in Denver, there are no shelters for couples, and so couples don't want to split up and sleep separately. Another thing is that people can't bring more than a pack typically into these shelters. So when you think about these homeless people who have large shopping carts, etc., they don't want to leave those belongings outside. Another issue can be substance abuse because shelters require that everyone inside of their shelters are sober. Another interesting statistic that came out of this point in time survey is it shows that here in the city and county of Denver, we have about three 3,500 homeless people currently. <laughs> Emily Allen, Fox Channel 2 News. All right, Emily, thanks very much. And uh, just driving along Spear yesterday, about 11th, I saw a, a couple of big tents right there on Cherry Creek uh, Pathway. So yeah. it's a problem out there. Shoot, thanks, almost. Emily.
All right, Emily, thank you. A family in Aurora says they woke up to what they thought was a rock being thrown through a window, but it turns out it was a bullet. The apparent shooting happened over the weekend in a neighborhood near Parker Road in Arapahoe. The family says around 4 a.m., two bullets hit the window of their 12-year-old daughter's room. Luckily, the girl was at a friend's house at a sleepover. They say that the shooter also put two bullets in the side of the house. I uh, crawled up on the roof, and I literally carved a bullet out of the side, side of our house. The Arapahoe County Sheriff's uh, Department is investigating. At this point, we don't know if it was random or if the family was targeted. We have some new information for you this morning. A former CU assistant football coach was stopped from entering a guilty plea by a judge yesterday. Joe Tumpkin is accused of beating and choking his ex-girlfriend. He was facing five serious felony assault charges and was going to plead guilty uh, under a plea deal, which would have only given him a misdemeanor assault charge. His ex appealed the deal, and the judge said he wants Tumpkin's lawyer and prosecutors to now describe in writing how this deal was reached and why. They have two weeks to file those motions. A wild story from Fort Collins where a mom travels to Mexico to find the man who sexually assaulted her son. Now that suspect has pleaded guilty. It was in 2017 that Andrew Vanderwall was accused of sexually assaulting multiple boys in Fort Collins. He failed to show up for a court day. So Lydia Lerma took matters into her own hands, even though law enforcement told her not to. Lerma got a tip that the man who molested her son went to Mexico. So she traveled south. She found him in a parking lot in a Mexican town, and she called the FBI. There was part of me that wanted to jump out and grab him myself and handle the situation. There was part of me that wanted to kill him. But all I could do, actually, honestly, was cry. Well, uh, now, months after the trip, Vanderwall agreed to a plea deal and could face up to 20 years in prison at his sentencing in March. That's a determined mom. Well, neighborhood watch groups help residents, of course, take back the streets by keeping a close eye on crime. But police are telling Channel 2 News there are two things that can turn a watch group into actual safety threats. Those are invading your neighbor's privacy, as well as starting to believe you can do a cop's job yourself. One woman who doesn't want to be identified tells us a neighbor circulated a letter with names and addresses of residents, taping that letter to random doors. She says it's obvious that several women on the list live alone. I am angry, I feel violated, and I feel endangered. That's not the actual way that it's organized at all. That information is not distributed publicly. Well, Denver police say neighborhood watch groups should never publicize personal information. Police say residents should report suspicious activity, but never take the law into their own hands. The Drug Enforcement Administration led raids here in Colorado saying marijuana grow houses have become an epidemic. So this map showing all of the locations that those raids actually happened. They began early yesterday morning from Thornton down through Denver and Aurora. In total, eight people were arrested for participating in illegal grow operations. At a news conference, DEA agents said stolen luxury cars were also involved. In some cases, the cars would be used to transport marijuana, then sold to unknowing buyers for below market value. Many of the raids took place in suburban neighborhoods, and folks were very upset. Well, I saw a SWAT, um, Aurora police SWAT van, and undercover cops with guns. It was very shocking. The EA officials saying that the illegal marijuana operation involved several states, including Georgia and Florida. Trending this morning, a tradition that began as a family competition has ended with a 21-foot-tall snowman wow. in Virginia. Jason Smith says at first, members of his family tried to beat each other by building the largest snowman, but after a while, it morphed into a team project to build this massive one. And after his historic snowfall over the weekend, the whole family started working really quick before it melts. The intention was to beat the record we had two years ago, which was 18 foot. We're already talking about the next snow. We're debating whether they're going, trying to go 25 for the next one. It took wood scaffolding and sleds to get snow up high enough to pile on. Smith says it also took a lot of hot chocolate and food to keep children and grandchildren motivated to finish that mammoth project. I love it. I wish something? we had just a little bit to make a uh, little could, snowman. Yeah, down here, we could even make a one-inch snowman. No, All that right. was really cool, though. A lot of work that went into that. To your health, if you're looking for a cold remedy, how about some of this? It doesn't have 
to be Selena, but a new study found that people with colds who listen to music increase their levels of antibodies, which boosts the immune system. Music also helps decrease levels of the stress hormone, cortisol, and we're told it can minimize pain perception, so you won't need as much medicine for those aches and pains. Researchers found dance music and jazz are the most effective. I also posted, I saw a study recently and I posted it on Facebook that drinking gin and tonics will yeah. alleviate really? colds over the winter because gin huh. has a lot of uh, like juniper berries and a lot of, uh, yeah, it does. I'm serious. <laughs> Our producer's going, uh huh. Yeah, you just have your gin and tonic. <laughs> no, gin is, uh, you know, got a lot of berries, a lot of sure. antibodies in it. Yeah, the old fashioned remedy. Not antibodies, but uh, antioxidants. Antioxidants, yeah, it's that there you one. Go. Yeah. Speaking of which. <laughs> Here's an important study. It's now been confirmed that Jane's Bond. <laughs> Well, see, he thought a gin and tonic a day. He thought or a he martini. He was a martini. Yeah. Yeah. Gin. Well, so here's the deal. Researchers in Australia found that in the last two dozen Bond films, James has been consuming, uh, guess how many drinks? Anybody? Over 100. 109. Public health experts say the character clearly has <laughs> alcohol issues, especially when you take into account all his risky behavior. Uh huh. Over the years, yep. shaken, not stirred. 109 times. <laughs> <laughs> 109 times. And they studied that. They yeah. studied that. A study for people got head. some time on their they hands. They got time to study that stuff. Here's I-25 way up to the north near E-470, Sky 2 out. Tracking your driving conditions through Metro Denver, we've got a good grip on what's going on here in the city and even west of town, Chris. Yeah, that's where the closure is, Ken. I'm meteorologist Chris Stomer. Yeah, there is our live camera up there at Loveland Pass where it is closed because of a, uh, an avalanche essentially across uh, the roadway. Now, as we head into the weekend, the pattern's gonna change, the snow uh, gets cut off, the wind dies down, different weather pattern. We'll take a look at that coming up. Well, a new study this morning on acne could mean better treatment. And a very interesting message from Sesame Street, the new Muppet they've added to the lineup. This is Colorado's own Channel 2 News Daybreak. All right, it's December. 13th, Tuesday, uh, not Tuesday, it's Thursday. We're it's, it's Friday Eve. It starts with a T. We're yeah. keeping track of today's biggest stories for you as you get ready to start your day. A slow slide has closed US 6 on the east side of Loveland Pass. Colorado State Patrol says it will remain closed until the sun comes up when crews can get in to make sure everything is safe. The Pinpoint Weather Beast is up at the Eisenhower Tunnel, as you can see right here, where traffic will be held at the top of every hour at the tunnel to allow those hazmat trucks to go through. Recalled beef linked to a salmonella outbreak is making dozens more people sick, including right here in Colorado. The Centers for Disease Control says 87 more people have gotten sick with salmonella linked to the tainted beef. Recalled beef has the establishment code of EST 267. So remember that 267. You should throw it out or return it for a refund. Former First Lady Michelle Obama in Colorado today and two events in Denver likely to snarl traffic. There's a book signing at the Tattered Cover Bookstore on Colfax. It requires a special wristband to get in. Those have been sold out, and that starts at uh, 2.30 this afternoon. But there are still a few tickets available for a speaking event at Pepsi Center tonight in Denver, where Mrs. Obama will talk about her new book. It's called Becoming. And today, a vigil will be held for a missing mother in Woodland Park. Kelsey Barrett disappeared on Thanksgiving Day. The 29-year-old was last seen at this grocery store. She has now been missing for three weeks. Police still calling this a missing persons case and say there are no suspects. The vigil will be held at Memorial Park in Woodland Park at 6 tonight. That's about 30 minutes west of Colorado Springs. And the top story on KWGN.com right now, could you go a year without your smartphone? Vitamin Water offering $100,000 to a person if he or she can go without their smartphone for a whole year. So if you want to give it a try, you can post to social media explaining why you are up to that challenge. On January 8th, they're going to pick someone to trade in the smartphone for, you know, just one of those plain old phones that makes calls and texts. That's it's it? smart. That yeah, you still get like a, much of a... It doesn't, does yeah. it? No, because you could use your laptop for emails. And sure, like an iPad. You just want right. a smartphone. Where do, I get, where do I stand in line for that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got to go to their social media. Okay. Maybe that's the point. They want you to go there. How about this? Some footage from last night. Whiteout conditions on Red Mountain Pass in southwest Colorado. <laughs> wow. This pass, 11,000 feet in elevation, connecting Uray and Silverton. It's considered one of the most dangerous passes to drive on, even without snow. <laughs> and that's our Kevin Torres oh. braving it behind the wheel. He says you could barely see 
in front of the car. You just hate it when you can't no see where the way. road ends on the side. Ooh. No, yeah. thank no you. No guardrails. And, and if on you've that. been, out, I know if you've been over Red Mountain Pass, there's no guardrails, and it's it's. <sighs> I'm scary. surprised it was open during that. Yeah. And it's scary anyway. You go in the summertime, it's beautiful. I'm surprised <laughs> he tried it. I know. <laughs> he says never again. <laughs> I believe him. Yeah. So that the mountains got uh, some snow last night, obviously. They did. Yeah, yeah tell you right, you reported eight inches down there. Really? Mm -hmm. So a nice but shot snow. of snow. 11 inches up at uh, Steamboat overnight. Here's that closure right there on Loveland Pass. So. Uh, that's something we're keeping an eye on. Our Bacchus and Shanker camera here. This is uh, from Horsetooth, west of Fort Collins. Crystal clear. Storm has exited. The wind is relaxing across the Front Range, and we're in the 20s this morning. 24 degrees uh, downtown, 26 out at the airport. If you're looking at a forecast, you can always put it in the Pinpoint Weather app. Download that. Westminster right here, starting off in the 20s, going with sunshine all the way through the day. Zero percent chance of a, any sort of precip. And I may possibly crawling into the low 40s. I think 40, 41 might be as good as it gets. But we have a little bit of leftover snow shrouding the tunnel and Loveland Pass. No surprise, even though the storm is essentially gone, that will vanish as the morning goes on. Drier air moving in, the wind directions will change, and it's pretty quiet here by this afternoon. Overnight into Friday morning, we are clear mountains and plains, and then in the afternoon, we still see sunshine. This new layer of clouds, that is for Saturday. We will be partly to mostly cloudy on Saturday. 41 today, here's the pinpoint seven-day forecast. 53 tomorrow, warming up big time. Saturday is basically 60 degrees. If you're going to the Broncos game on Saturday, dress for temperatures like this. 50 at kickoff, 46 half, 39 by the end. Again, a partly to mostly cloudy <clears throat> sky. On Sunday, 53 degrees and sunshine. We cruise in the 50s all the way through Wednesday of next week. That's warm stuff. Ken, do you have a traffic alert? Of yes, we do. And this is uh, why we cannot have nice things. Uh, speeds along 25 or slow. Sky 2 out over. You can see the big red X. These two guys, first crash of the morning. We blame the guy in the back. He's responsible. So this is I-25 near 84th. If you're in the area of North Glen and Thornton, kind of hang with that on-ramp lane, and you'll be able to pass these cars, and then you can merge. Of course, nobody's on scene yet. Once police arrive on scene, the flashing lights will create more delays. But that's your first freeway issue here in town. West of town, traction and chain laws are still set up all over portions of I-70. Loveland is still closed, so be ready for those conditions. But heading south into the city, speeds along 25, drive times, they will continue to change. We'll take another look at it here coming up. Well, new at 6.30, a North Carolina police deputy has been placed on administrative leave after video showing him tackling two teenage girls went viral. Take a look. This is my sister's personal evidence. property. This evidence. Ow! I didn't do anything, sir! Authorities say deputies were called to a home after someone complained about illegal drug activity. Deputies say they could smell marijuana coming from a car parked in front of the house and that a 17-year-old boy in the driver's seat had active warrants. The sisters, ages 17 and 14, started recording the arrest. The video shows the deputy grabbing that phone from the younger teen and wrestling her to the ground. The girl kicked the phone to her sister. The deputy said the phone was evidence and then wrestled the 17-year-old to the ground. The North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation now reviewing that case. Well, to your health, and a new study suggests acne. Well, it might be genetic, and the findings could lead to more effective treatment, which would be so great for teenagers and many others around the world. This study is from London. It looked at DNA from more than 25,000 people, including 5,000 with severe acne. Researchers found genetic variances connected to hair follicles were more common among people with acne. The findings could lead to much more effective drugs and treatment for the condition. And Sesame Street trying to raise awareness about childhood homelessness by introducing a homeless Muppet for the very first time. Lily is a new character whose family has lost their home. Lily's journey with homelessness will not appear on televised episodes, only in online resources. And there's a new online prank that's catching on in China. Take a look at how it's done. The prank consists of a woman trying on jewelry. The idea is to quickly run off pretending like you're about to steal whatever you uh -uh. were wearing. Oh, no. Why? Of course, the workers think she's stealing the jewelry. They chase her. However, it's all a hoax. The prankster stops at a mirror or another jewelry case that happens to be near the exit. Why would you do that? Why do they do anything that's viral? Oh, my God. And why would you, uh, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. anyway. So what does she do? She, so she's got to run, on. but they don't run out of the store. Yeah. They just run away from the counter real quick. Pretty obvious. See oh, what to the look at the mirror. Do. Okay. Just gotcha. to see what the workers do if you run away with jewelry. Okay. There you go. Mm. A lot of those employees jump over the counter. 
Yeah, who would grab something of value and run off just for the prank? <laughs> oh. That's a pretty old computer. Yeah, you're right. You knocked off my reading glasses. Uh oh, did you break them? <laughs> no. This is actually worth, worth less than the cardio it takes to steal it, so forget about it. It, does, it doesn't even work. Hey, last night's premiere of Aquaman and Jason Momoa led fellow cast members in a traditional haka dance. Ooh. Mm -mm. Is this so that you could do it? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> the heck? Uh, <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, so I was a little off. Is that the Samoan dance? Yeah. Oh, it's the off. best. Yeah. Yeah. It's a ceremonial dance in Maori culture. Very energetic, with stomping and loud chanting. We need to do this every I morning to wake I up, guys. I think the Hawaiian football team, college team, does that. Well, the New Zealand the team, yeah, right? The New Zealand. Yeah. yeah, it's New Zealand. It, does, <laughs> it, it dates back a little further uh. than football. It's rugby, no, isn't I know, it? But the, it's I think the Hawaii football team does it also. <laughs> uh, anyway, he also broke that trident right over his knee. <laughs> <laughs> don't break anything, No, no, Chris. don't take okay, my iPad. <laughs> okay, I now. need that. Hold on to your stuff. All let's... right, let's move on, shall we? A woman in California excited to meet one of the basketball greats. The only problem, she didn't know who she was meeting. <laughs> yes, you are, you are. Who am I? What was his name? No, no come and tell me. I know. No, no, who am I? What's my name? Charles Buckley. No? We are Charles Buckley, right? No. Then Shaquille O'Neal, yeah. There you go. He recorded the whole thing, got a big kick out of it. Said her daughter was a big fan, but she kept mistaking him for Charles Barkley. Oh, that's great. Shaquille <laughs> Yeah. And they don't really look a lot alike, no. but still. I, for years, I still get confused with Dan Daru. People always are, hey, Dan Daru! Exactly. Yeah. Nothing alike. Thank you. <laughs> just, uh, didn't mean anything. Uh, just uh, anything you like. Well, Santa made an appearance yesterday at Children's Hospital. <laughs> Quit stop, taking my stuff. Stop stealing stuff, waiting for a reaction. All right. Well, I can't read that story because he took my iPad, so let's go to weather. <laughs> All right. Well, let's take a look at the pinpoint weather forecast here today. Uh, so the storm exiting, leaving us a little cooler today, but you know, that's actually right where we should be. The normal high is 42, 41 right there. Sunshine, wind relaxing slowly. Mountain snow slowly ending as well. Uh, then as we head into the weekend, boy, does the pattern change. I mean, we're just... Uh, Totally different with high pressure. We'll take a look at Saturday, Sunday in the Broncos game here. Just a few minutes, but Ken, over to you for a look at the time signature. And now as we have uh, cracked the seal on the accident, southbound along I-25, that accident now off onto the uh, shoulder. But this traffic alert is because now northbound along I-25, approaching Colfax, you can see it right there. The two left lanes are blocked. Uh, fire crews are protecting that scene. The headlight side is that northbound run into downtown Denver. We'll show you the delays behind this crash here coming up. All right, at 7 o'clock, we're live and local. We're keeping an eye on Loveland Pass, of course, as crews work to make sure things are safe after a snow slide. And to your health, the little seed that packs a whole lot of nutrition. Former First Lady Michelle Obama in Denver today. She's got a book signing coming up in the afternoon, a big event at the Pepsi Center tonight. We'll tell you about security and if you can still get tickets.